Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Azam, and in this video you'll be learning about how you can create dynamic predicates in Swift data. So what exactly do I mean by dynamic predicates? Well, if you look at this query, it's trying to pull everything from expenses. And then we use it in our list. You can see the result on the right-hand side we get all the different expenses, whether they are credit, cash, or debit. But what if we only wanted to fetch expenses based on our selection? How can we do that? Now you might be saying, well, it's not a big deal. I mean, we can simply go ahead and uh, filter it out over here. And that's fine. But keep in mind that whenever you're performing a filter, you're still fetching all the different expenses. Now, in our case, we only have four expenses, so that doesn't really make that much of a difference. But what about if you had 400,000 expenses that you're fetching in memory and then performing your predicates or filtration? That can be very expensive. So let's go ahead and see that how we can execute SQL in Swift data, which basically means how to perform a predicate that will allow us to only get the things that we actually need. For this to work, the first thing we're gonna do is create a predicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a predicate as a state property, which will be a predicate and it will be of type expense. We do want to provide some initial value to it, so I'm just gonna set it to false. And false simply means that the predicate is not really going to fetch anything. Now, if you set this to true, then it means that this predicate is saying like, yeah, go ahead and fetch everything. So how can we use this predicate or how can we change the value of the predicate depending on your selection. Well, let's change it to false first because I don't really want to fetch anything right now. Whenever a person selects anything from a picker, we can access that using the on change view modifier. So let's go ahead and use on change view modifier. We're going to be looking at the selected payment type and this particular action is gonna get called. Inside this action, we can set the predicate. Predicate equals to, we'll create the predicate, which will give us the expense, and the predicate will be based on, well, the expense type or the payment type. So we will select the payment type ID and the selected payment type dot raw value. And the reason that we're doing all of that, the raw value and not really comparing against the enum is because at this moment, enums are not really supported inside the predicate in Swift data. And I'll link to another video that I did, uh, which was titled Common Issues and Problems in Swift Data. And you can watch that where I go into more detail about that issue. So having done that, now the next thing we need to do is not use these expenses over here. And we want to go ahead and make sure that all of this, the list, which is responsible for displaying all these records, is into moved into a separate control. So let me remove that. Now, since we have removed that, we also don't really need expenses. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove expenses and create a brand new control. The reason that we are creating a brand new control or a brand new view is that in that particular view, we should be able to pass in the actual predicate. So this is going to take in a predicate 
in the initializer. The predicate will be of type expense. Once we have the predicate, based on that, we can go ahead and create our query. So we'll reinitialize our query expenses. And this is where we can pass in the predicate. There we go, predicate. We don't really care that much about the sort and the animation, so we can remove that part. The body will remain the same, so we can just copy paste the code that we originally had for the body. There we go. Great. Now, looking at the expense list view, now you can see that in the expense list view, if you want to initialize it, you must pass in the predicate. This is going to be the same predicate that you will be setting in the content view. So now I can always go back to my code in the content view, and I can say expense list view and pass in the predicate. Now, if I do that, it's not really going to fetch anything at all. Well, maybe that's because this is set to false. But if I set to true, then it may fetch every single thing, which I also don't want. Hmm. Well, this is kind of like a weird issue that we're facing. I don't really want to fetch all the things, but I also don't really want to show nothing. We are currently at selection for credit, so it should only show credit. One way to solve this problem is to implement the on appear. So whenever the view actually appears, we can set our predicate. So predicate equals to, and kind of like the same exact line that we were doing before, we can utilize that. And now you can see that since the credit is by default selected, it's only showing the records for credit. The important part over here to remember is if you run this application, then from the database, it's only going to fetch those records, cookies and milk, when the credit is selected. And that is what's going to make a big difference if you have a lot of records. And we can also always see what exactly is going on what kind of queries are being performed. If you want to see what queries are being performed, go to your scheme. And in the scheme, make sure that you set in the argument section this particular key. And that is going to show you all the different queries that are being performed, as you can see. Let me remove all these queries and go back again over here in the simulator. Now. Keep in mind that when I select debit, it's going to go to the database and get those records. And the query that is being used to go to the database is this one, the one that is getting executed. So we can definitely see that whenever you select a particular option like debit or cash or credit, it actually goes to the database, perform this query based on where the where clause is, based on the payment type ID, and it only returns those records, all right? So if you have, I don't know, 1 million different expenses, but only 50 of them were debit, then it will only get you back 50, not 1 million. So this technique can be used for application where you actually have a lot of records and you don't really want to fetch all the records into the memory and perform filter on it because, I mean, think about fetching million, two million, five million, ten million records into memory. That's going to take a lot of time. It's going to, you know, not really going to be good for performance. So using this structure and using these predicates that we're doing, we're only performing a fetch when needed and we're only getting the stuff that we need. We're not getting millions of records because as you can see, there is a where condition that is making sure that we only get the records that we need. So that is how you can use 
uh, predicates and dynamic predicates in Swift data. I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my website at azamsharp.school. This is my new home for creating and also uploading all the courses. And you can see we have around 21 plus courses and 120 hours of content, probably the largest catalog for iOS development videos. And I do also offer monthly subscription as well as annual subscription with a free trial that will give you access to all the 21 courses, three digital books, all the current courses, but all the future course courses also. If you wish, you can also purchase courses individually. You can see the different pricing options over here. There is a Swift Data course also. If you want to try out something for free, then there is a course, a small course on Swift UI fundamentals. You can definitely check that one out also. But as you can see, lots of great material is there. Uh, their communities are activated on my website, so you can always ask questions and I'll answer them. And this is, I mean, 120 plus hours is a lot of content. So I'm sure you're gonna enjoy these courses, all right? So thank you so much and visit azamsharp.school for your iOS development videos.